Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning. Welcome to Run It Back, right here on FanDuel TV. We are very bright this morning, you guys. We don't match at all. It's like we don't even know each other. And I like it. I know. Lou's the best one. All right, Sham Sharania coming in. Stadium Insider Chen Lepi and Lou Will on the end. And we got hoops. We got Lakers. They got to win. We're going to start there. Uh, 116-104 victory for Los Angeles. LeBron with 19-11-8. AD with 24-12. and 12. D'Lo, I mean, he's doing things. 26-6 and four steals. <laughs> Uh, they are now three and one against the Thunder this season. This will be a long stretch of probably talking about the Thunder in this regard, but we'll start with the Lakers specifically. Chandler, why is this a bad matchup for OKC? Well, I think the Lakers are just too physical. I think when you have LeBron James going downhill, when you have Anthony Davis crashing the glass and, and you know making it a point to get him the ball on the inside. It's a tough matchup. We've been talking about that for Oklahoma City all year long. They're thin up front. They don't really have depth uh, at at the five position. Uh, They add a guy like Mike Muscala, who's really a a pick-and-pop kind of shooter guy. Uh, I would have probably played Biombo more in this particular matchup just to Mm -hmm. kind of have more physicality. Um, And and they played good. The Lakers played good. D'Lo absolutely blacked out late in the game, hit some insane (laughs) shots. And when I'm watching this game, it's like Oklahoma City, it got off to a crazy start. It was 11 to 2 or 13 to 4, something like that. And they stopped going to what was working. They started settling for bad jumpers. They didn't get to the rim. They didn't get to the foul line as much. Kind of took their foot off the gas, and the Lakers stuck with it and continued just to pound the ball inside, get out in transition, uh, you know, force some turnovers where they could go get some easy buckets. And they really took advantage of this. So, this is why it's hard to trust this young team. You know what I mean? Because this is a team that they're going to have to play in the in the playoffs. This, got, this could possibly be their one eight seed. Um, mm. And I don't know who I'd go with. I, I'd probably give the edge, obviously, to Oklahoma City. But it, it's not going to be an easy series no matter who they play. When you look at that Western Conference and how deep it is, it's not going to be an easy matchup for any of these teams, especially the Oklahoma City Thunder. So. I think the physicality, Chet at the five, that's a real issue. And I don't know if Biombo and Muscala are the answers. Uh, that's where I was going to start you, too, because the I, I don't know if the Thunder are just too small, Lou, just to set that up. Lakers out, rebounded them 55-38. And let's not forget, Yusuf Nurkic had those 31 rebounds against them just on Sunday. So I, it seems like this oversimplification, but is it just that they are too small? Yeah, they're going to be targeted. You know, they have a they have a size issue. You know, they brought in Muscala to try to patch that up. They brought in Biombo to patch that up, even Gordon Hayward. They're not big enough. AD just exposed that last night. You know, and this is a team that relies a lot on three-point shooting and execution. When they're not shooting threes, they're forced to play inside of the paint. And obviously, you know, that's going to be something that they're going to have to work out in order for them to be successful coming down the stretch because they just don't have enough size on the, on the inside on defense or on offense, you know, and that was last night was one of those games where it was glaring. It kind of got exposed and it showed, and that's something they're going to have to deal with. Like I said, this is a team that likes to play on the perimeter. Very good executing team, I must add, but they don't have guys that's going to go in there and finish on a deep, on, on the offensive end that's going to give them what they need when it comes to point paints other than other than Shea um, and Chet. And then defensively, just too small on the, on the interior. So that's going to be something that we have to look forward to um, in the playoffs for this team. So you mentioned the fact that they're going to have targets on their back. And I, I I couldn't agree more just in the simple sense of the, they're the new kids and people are gunning for them. And they shot 39% last night. Let's talk a little bit about them at home, Lou, because they are 24 and six on their home court and they're young and this will all be new to them. So how important is a home court advantage for them come playoffs? Yeah, they're going to have home court advantage. I don't, I don't see them slipping from, from, uh, all the way up to a five. I think they're going to be just fine, and it's going to be vital for them. Like we said, this is a young basketball team. They play extremely confident when they're on their home floor, when they have their crowd behind them, when they feel comfortable in their environment, and they're very successful at home. They play really, really good basketball there. If that team is forced to start on the road, say that they have to start and play against a team um, with some size, like a like a Denver or one of those teams that's going to have 
uh, guys on the inside that's going to create issues for them. This is not going to go as well as they planned, but I feel really good. I feel really confident about them starting at home, no matter what the matchup is, even though they have some issues with their with their interior defense. Uh, the Lakers have 19 games remaining. It's going to be a fun 19 games. They they are now what? Two games behind the six seed, Chandler? Do you think there's a run in them? to, to I mean, look, it's so jumbled up. It's a tough question, but is there enough in that Lakers tank to jump up to that top six? I don't think so. I think they're destined for the play and I think, which by the way is, is where they want to be. Look at those rankings. Mm -hmm. You rather play the Thunder or the Timberwolves than, than get the six seed, get out of the play in and here, congratulations, you get to play the Nuggets in the first round. So <laughs> I think ideally they'd obviously want to get to that seven, eight seed just to play one game, you know, beat Sacramento or Dallas and get that seven seed. But it's so tight right now. Anything can happen. When you look at the two or three game leads and cushions, it, it, that's one week. So it, there's definitely more than enough time. Uh, and the Lakers seem to be figuring it out. I, I love the way D'Lo's playing. I love this lineup they're going to with Rui. Cam Reddish is back. Torian Prince is playing well. So they're getting a little bit from everything, from everybody, while AD dominates, while LeBron dominates. So are they going to get to the sixth seed? I, I don't think so. Just like the Thunder aren't going to lose home court advantage. Um, but I do like them in the play-in. When you look at the Kings, Mavs, Lakers, Warriors, ah, I, mean, I think the Kings are the, probably the best team of those four. But then the, then it's kind of a pick -em. and It's hard to go against LeBron. It's hard to go against the Lakers, especially just one game to kind of advance and get that spot. Uh, who knows what will happen? But long story short, I think they stay in the play-in. And, okay. and we start and we saw last night, right, Chandler? That we know what you're gonna get out of AD. We know what you're gonna get out of LeBron. This is gonna come down to the supporting cast. D'Lo is gonna have to play at a high clip. The praise for Austin Reeves has gotten a little quiet. He's gonna have to step it back up and give them more of those 15, 20 point night games. Torian Prince is playing well. He's playing well on both ends of the floor. And um, and Rui is playing well as, as also. And, you know, we don't know what we're going to get out of Gabe Vincent when he's finally healthy to give this team another ball handler. But it's going to come down to the supporting cast. And I think that's going to be one of the things that's going to carry them over the top to give them a real push in the playoff series. Yeah, Shams. You know I'm about to ask you about Gabe Vincent. Any updates? What, is he going to be out there? Or what are we looking at? Amazing setup there by Lou, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Gabe Holy. Vincent is doing more and more. Uh, Gabe Vincent's doing more and more on the court. Um, the Lakers will know more, I think, next week where Gabe Vincent stands. But barring any setbacks, his hope is still mid to late March to get back in the lineup with the Lakers. They can still use another guard in the backcourt. But I will say, last night, Spencer Dinwiddie came in there. Uh, the, it's clear that the starting rotation, the starting lineup, there's a lot of usage that's going around right now. D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, LeBron James, obviously the ball's in their hands. So, Spencer Dumity came in last night, uh, defensively stepped up, had that block on Shea. Gilles Alexander had the layup in transition, had a few assists as well um, in that limited role. I think off the bench, what you're seeing is, is players are starting to figure out the role. Torian Prince is now coming off the bench, uh, playing around 15 to 20 minutes, spotting up, making threes. Spencer Dumity really serving as a, as a three and D guard off that bench. And then Gabe Vincent, you want to kind of change the tempo, change the pace. That's why they signed him from Miami. So the hope is, barring any setbacks, a return at some point here over the next few weeks. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, moving on, Clippers and Bucks. I did one of those things where you sort of bet something in the middle of the game. I almost got it, guys. I just wanted to share that. Uh, they didn't have Giannis, and they still beat the Clippers. Didn't matter. Six straight for Milwaukee. Dame, 41-4-4. Four four. Portis off that bench with 28-16. Harden and PG, much better night this time. 29 points apiece. But the Bucks, since the All-Star break, are 6-0. and oh, and, and this is a good... Clippers team and they didn't have Giannis. So Chandler, if you first, what is what has happened? What is the biggest difference now before we're sort of mocking Milwaukee? Well, I think when you have a team with this much talent, that's why people are rolling their eyes when Doc Rivers says this is the hardest job he's going to take over. It's no one, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take this job. This, this this team is stacked. This team. What's funny is you keep saying no Giannis. There was also no Chris Middleton, and and, and they were very shorthanded. And then. It's Dame said before the game, they were talking about it. They don't even talk about who's in, who's out. They just talked about what they have to do this night to win the game. And Bobby Portis went bananas. He looked like the best player on the floor for most times. Dame Lillard, we talked about how great of an all-star weekend he had. That looks like it's carried over since then. And 
this is one of those streaks where now all of a sudden, instead of talking about how, how bad of a job Doc's doing, they shouldn't fire Griffin. Now we're talking about them possibly as contenders and real shots at knocking off the Celtics and getting to the finals. So it's funny how this happens. The league, it's got to, you got to have a short term memory, just like we had when the Clippers, when they made the trade for James Harden and they lose a couple in a row. Everyone panics why they do it. Then they kind of took off. The Bucks are kind of in that phase right now where they're starting to figure it out. They made great adjustments. I will say, Doc, if it was Doc, if it was Pat, Beverly, whoever, they fell to a zone last night. And the Clippers had a lead, and they started settling for these long jump shots, kind of broke their rhythm offensively, and that's the type of adjustment that this team needs. And because they know they have guys that can score, they have the Dan Willers. Bobby Portis is giving you, you know, 28, 30 points scoring inside out. Uh, guys like Connelton, Beasley, and those guys are picking up the slack, not making big plays down when Chris Middleton's out, when Giannis is out. This team is loaded, and they're deep. And they do have the talent and the potential to defend. So I think they're just starting to kind of create their identity and figure out who they are. And this team's a real threat. This team is a real threat. It's obviously, with the honest in the lineup is a whole nother level. But this team just showed you they can beat one of the better teams without even being fully loaded. And you talk about um, you talk about chemistry. Let's give Pat Bev his flowers. Like I thought he was the MVP last night for that game. Right? He was disruptive hmm. on defense. He was one of those guys that he was active. He was talkative. He was creating a lot of havoc on the defensive end, and he made open shots, and he was a threat on the offensive end, you know, and that's something that he's not really known for. That's not really his MO, but he was able to do it on both ends of the floor. So when we start talking about this team's identity and them trying to figure it out, I think now everybody is starting to settle in. Everybody's starting to settle in what needs to be done, and they're putting it all on the table, and they got a big win without, two, you know, two of their all-star guys, even though they still had an all-star in the game. You know, they play with just enough and everybody stepped up and played their roles. Guys, is it possible? I mean, I know we just sort of take some of these things that coaches do and I don't know how effective it all is, but Doc did sort of question the toughness of this team right when he got there, talking about some are there, some are in Cabo, all that good stuff. Do you guys take that to heart and react to it or nothing, Lou? And what did you think? Does this have something Uh, to do with it? No, that's, that's not a thing. Chandler will tell you as well, Listen, the coaches, after, before All-Star break, every coach is going to blame a bad game on, on guys being checked out for All-Star break. Or they'll probably even say before the game, hey, listen, I know you guys are ready to go on break for two and a half <laughs> hours. Just lock in and you can go where and do whatever you want. So this is a this is a normal thing. So him challenging them or saying that they were half of them were checked out, half of them were there, that's the norm. I think Doc has gotten an opportunity to start putting his pieces together. He's starting to find a rhythm with how he want to coach, how he thinks this team should play to give them the best uh, opportunity to win games. Then I think that's what we're seeing, but I don't, I don't think that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. Every, every coach that has a good team that plays a bad team before all star break calls it a trap game because of that reason. They know they're, right. they're figuring out plans. They know they have the next week off They're They're booking hotels, flights, everything like that. And it's just that that's what a coach does. They try and push you They try and just basically reinforce like, Hey, 48 minutes and then go do what you got to do. And it's hard. It's difficult. A lot of times you say you're going to lock in, but that, that, that's that time where everything's kind of getting slower and you don't want to go to shoot around the film session pissing you off because it's so long. So that that's to me, I don't think that's like this pivotal moment that Doc Rivers sparked a locker room by challenging their toughness. I just think they're extremely talented. They're extremely good. And it was only a matter of time till they started figuring it out. Now, Doc making the adjustments of the ATOs and the going to zone and when to play man and when to switch, that is, that's critical for them going forward. I know, but you guys know, as, as viewers, we love a dramatic locker room speech, at least the idea of it. We live for it. Um, they got the two seed, Chandler, and, and you know, Cavs are there, but they've been a little bit wonky lately. How important is it Milwaukee stay there? Well, I think it's important, but also looking at the Eastern Conference, it's not like the West. Like the, the mm-hmm. Eastern Conference, you get the two seed to play in, you're looking at the Miami Heat and the Pacers. So uh, it's important, mm-hmm. I guess, and it's hard to predict. But again, it's not like these are going to shuffle around so much. But if I, I'd rather play the Magic than, than, the, than the Heat <laughs> or the Pacers. So there's so much basketball left that teams are going to prepare to win as many games as possible. And then maybe kind of do the, the Mark Cuban thing last year and sit and choose and kind of look at matchups. But we can say that now he's not the owner anymore. He doesn't care. Michelle. It's a great point. And they already paid the fine. Yeah. He already <laughs> ate. So, so and they got the pick. And they got the pick. 
and they got the pick. <laughs> so they're yeah, good. It, it worked out. I do think there's so much basketball now. And I do think the Milwaukee Bucks are a better basketball team than the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I do yeah. think they're going to hold on to that two seed, but that might not be a great thing if the three seed gets the magic and they end up with the heat in the first round. That'd be a real kick in the D. A kick in the D and D. That would suck. Shams, we saw Giannis out there. He was testing out the Achilles, and then it was basically a no-go right before game time. Do you have any any the latest news? How's he looking? The Bucks aren't uh, seeming overly worried about this situation. It's a Achilles soreness that they're describing it as. He tried to warm up as we see there, couldn't play, couldn't uh, really manage that pain to be able to get out there and play. But the Bucks have to take a cautious approach. They've already done so with Chris Middleton. He's missed the last month, as Chandler just said, with that ankle sprain. The hope is that he's going to be back sooner than later. But uh, they're being safe with Chris Middleton. I'm not sure when he's going to be back, hopefully over the next week or so. And then Giannis Antetokounmpo obviously sat last night with that Achilles soreness. We'll see if he'll be out there for the next game. That's such hey, a I weird wasn't movie. Worried. I wasn't I wasn't worried till I saw that clip. Yeah. Uh, that seems worrisome, guys. Uh, that's just like a normal jumper and he's doing that. That's that's I think it's smart to sit him down again. This is a team that is is a real contender with him. And this is we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here where they need him fully healthy. But that <laughs> that doesn't look good. There's no he can't even take a standstill jumper. There was no shot he was playing. Yeah, I, I, maybe I'm silly, but Lude, I, I don't know. That seems like the video is a little bit not great. Yeah, it looks a, it looks a little alarming. But you know, Chandler, this is also fresh out of the car just now, getting your body warmed up. Your your adrenaline is not rolling. Did yet. you say fresh no. out of the car? Yeah, yeah this is at like four p.m. Yeah, this like is the bus this is early. or his car. Yeah, yeah okay, this okay. Is, this is early. Listen, so before you before you get going, a lot of times. You feel like I might not be able to go tonight, but once you start getting huh. a sweat going, your adrenaline's rolling a little bit. I can tough through this and I can fight through this pain. So I, I think the Milwaukee Bucks, they're just they're just iron on the side of caution and just not making this worse. It might not be a big of a deal as it looked right there. That clip was kind of alarming, but it, you know, once you get growing, once you get rolling and ready to go for a game, he probably could have played if he really wanted to. Who knows? Shams, I think. The whole that's, time during the game. That's, so it, that is true. Day. And he did walk off and whatever. But I feel like that's for like Shams, you and I and civilians. Like when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you think of is, ugh, I can't face the day and I just want to go back to sleep. But then you get up and the adrenaline starts flowing and you're like, crush that. Okay, okay. I'm with you, Lou. We got you. We uh, face the day. We face the day, though. We get yeah, there. We, we face get the there. day. Oh, we conquer it. Um, let's uh, let's talk Clippers for a second. And Lou, you've been you've been touting this team. They're on your list. You got them there. But the big three was out there for this one. They had a better production than they did the previous game, but no Giannis, and they still lose. What do we make of that? Like I said, this this team they can't uh, they can't allow their offensive efficiency to determine whether they're going to guard or not. You know, they were up twelve to thirteen points consistently throughout the course of this game when they were be, when they were able to score and everything was going good on the offensive end. When they start getting into a little rut. They start relying on three-point shots that weren't going in. They stopped guarding. And Damian Lillard went in attack mode. You know, he saw red. He saw an opportunity to take over the game, and that's what he did. And so, you know, for this Clippers team, like they just had a grind-out win the, the game before, they got to have that identity coming down this stretch. You know, even when we can't score the ball or we're not sure what we're going to get on the offensive end, they have guys that are good enough that can sit down and play defense and defense. Offensively, they can win games like that. And it showed against the Timberwolves the other night. This night, in particular, Dame Lillard saw blood in the water. He took over and was able to give the uh, Milwaukee Bucks a good win. So the Clippers are going to have to be one of those teams. When it's not going their way on the offensive end, they got to lock up. I don't even know if they want this, Chandler, but they're currently two and a half games back of Denver. They're in the four spot. Can they get to three? Do they want to get to three? I guess that's the more important question. I think they're pretty much a lock in the four spot. You look to two and a half behind the Nuggets and three and a half games up on the five, six seed. Again, that's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things here. Um, but you look at that, it's, yeah. I mean, they get to play the New Orleans. But by the way, we're, no one's talking about New Orleans. There's 11 games over 500. And, and then the five seed of the Western Conference is crazy to me. Um, but yeah, if the season stopped yeah. right now, I, I bet they'd be stoked. You know what I mean? They get to play the New Orleans Pelicans that no one's really talking about, that, and that's a great matchup for them. And like Lou said, they had a great night offensively last night. They were up 13 points, I think, in the last minute of the third quarter. 
And then they let that determine when they start missing shots, they settle and they go to ISO and James does his bang, bang, bang thing. And there's no movement. There's no flow. And when it works, it looks great. It looks like they're all dialed. They're all making crazy shots, highlight after highlight. When it doesn't, it's just a bunch of lost possessions with long twos and step back threes and nothing downhill to the basket. So when they're best, they're moving the ball, they're working the clock, and then they attack it, whatever that mismatch is. Not just right away, Kawhi coming down, bringing the ball all the way off a rebound, backing up to a post up and taking the shot with no one else touching the ball. I don't think that's a recipe for any team to win. So I think they do have the talent on both sides of the floor. They're still in good shape. This is one game. And a lot of teams, guys, teams to play better when their star goes out. It's motivation for Bobby Portis. It's motivation for these other guys to step up in their role. So to me, it's just, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it. Um, Moving on around the league we go. Don't look now, but Demonis Sabonis, the streak is now 43 straight games with a double double 56 double doubles overall on the season we've talked about that he's not talked about enough chandler um so let's let's talk about him right now how 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 impressive is this streak it's insane he is the closest <laughs> thing to Jokic that we have and i say this all the time and whether it's because he's in sacramento or they haven't won at a big level and the guy's unbelievable. The way he plays at the five position as basically another point guard out there. He's unselfish. He's tough. He rebounds. He can dime. He makes usually centers don't make their teammates better. Jokic is like this anomaly. He's just another yeah. one of him. A guy like Singoon, him, Jokic. These guys are different. They're unbelievable. The way you can play through them on the post, on the elbow, the way they can get rebounds and bring it down. The, the guy is truly unbelievable. He's tough. He plays in games. He's always effective. Uh, he's a great building block for this team, for this franchise moving forward. And it's every single night. He's got a shit ton of triple doubles, too. I mean, we talked about that, but he he he's unbelievable. I'm a huge fan. Complete all-star snub, him and Fox. Uh, the league is so yeah. talented right now, and he's one of the more talented guys because the way he plays is beautiful to watch. Here, I'll put you in a weird spot, Lou. You have to pick Sabonis or Fox to build around. What are you doing? I'm a I'm a build around Fox, and oh. and honestly, I, I mm. picked Fox because this is a team that needs to play with pace. They like to play fast. They like to play up and down. And so when that's the identity of your team, I think you have to put the ball in Fox's hands, and they and everybody else got to fall in line. However, half court offense. Defensively, Sabonis is the guy. So I think that's why they're a great one-two punch. But if I'm picking one of the two guys, I'm going to pick Fox simply because of the identity that this team has created for themselves. You see it now. When they have low-scoring games, they're not as they're not as effective. They don't win games when it's a low-scoring grind-out game. They got to put 120, 130 on the board for this team to win. And for that to happen, I think they got to play with pace, and that starts with Fox. So we went from greatness to some hot garbage. Uh, it's official. Washington Wizards now the crappiest team in the league. Look at that. Nine oh. and 52. Losers of 15 straight. Look, we just talked about who you building around in Sacramento. What a lovely problem to have. Let's do the opposite of that. Who are you building around in Washington or are you just blowing the entire thing up, Chandler? Eesh. Oh. Eesh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh. I mean, they kind of made their bed. They they kind they kind of made their bed with Bull with Kuzma, right? So it's it's Wait, they're I mean, in a they're can in you a unmake real the box. beds. Can they're you burn the bed box. to the ground? What do you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah Chandler, say what you mean, buddy. <laughs> Come on, Chandler. I'm honestly looking at their roster. I know people are high. I'm, I know people are high on Kubale. Uh, I'm building around that guy. I'm I'm, I'm keeping that guy. I think it's tough. To, what are you going to get for Jordan Poole and that contract and his reputation? Kuzma, I think, mm. is probably the best asset because he can play. He's a good dude. Uh, he, he's versatile. Uh, I do remember a couple months ago him tweeting, don't be that team to uh, to lose to the Pistons. So now it's, oh, yes, it's they crazy. did. It's crazy to me that uh, they're now. <laughs> Cold take. Uh, that didn't pan out very well. But <laughs> listen, this, this, I don't think expectations were very high for this team. but. I also don't think they were this low. So when you look at this team, I just don't, don't know what they can get besides maybe some stuff for Kuzma. So 
yeah, I'm this is the first time I think in my <laughs> life I'm speechless. I wouldn't know what I wouldn't want the job. I wouldn't know what to do. Lou, what, what do you what do you do? You call blow the cops. Just, yeah, blow it up. This team stinks. I don't like that's <laughs> what's funny. You've been getting your ass kicked all you like, what's funny? Mm. Don't be that team like make it translate to basketball. Like go out on the floor and play harder. Uh, you know, obviously you can't do everyone's job, but it's like, none of this shit is fun. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And so with that, this is one of your, this is one of your leaders. And I don't want to be hard on Coos because I love, I love Coos and he's had a, he's had a really good NBA career, but it's just like, you know, this is tone deaf right here. Like, I don't, we, yeah. why don't we make jokes about, you know what I'm saying? And so with that, and that being one of your top two guys, blow this whole thing up. Let's start fresh. All right, so we're going to, uh, I, I mean, look, there's no relegation yet in the NBA, Shams. I still vote for it, and I pray for it every night. But you heard the guys. They're looking at the roster, and, and they're just sort of lost. What's the plan here? Is there hope anywhere in that organization? I, I said it, I think, a month ago, and it still remains true. Bilal Koulibaly, their rookie, he's the only untouchable on this roster. Kyle Kuzma, you look at him. I, I believe the organization does view him as a building block, a guy that's on team-controlled contract and just taking everyone behind the scenes here the the wizards did have an option to trade kyle kuzma at the deadline to the mavericks for grant williams and an unprotected first round pick that was the the baseline of a package maybe another player thrown in there too to make salaries work and michael winger the president of, of the organization of monumental basketball he brought this deal to kyle kuzma and if kuzma had pushed for it based on their relationship based on where they, they their partnership is at that deal probably gets done, but Kyle Kuzma decided to stay loyal. He wanted to remain and stick it out with the Wizards. There was no deal that happened, but when you look into the summer now, Kyle Kuzma will remain a guy that could be a trade candidate. A deal was potentially close with the Wizards. It was uh, with the Wizards and Mavericks. That was literally based on Kyle Kuzma's, wor Kuzma's word. So I'm curious from Lou and Chandler's perspective, if Kyle Kuzma has moved this summer, where would you want him to be? Where do you think he fits best? Chandler looks skeptical. <laughs> It's like, why would you uh, say no to that? Uh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, Sean's, where the hell do you want him to go? Uh, I like who's been to the Kings. I, I, kinda, I wish that would have happened. I, I like him with Fox. I like him with Sabonis, kind of a versatile four that can handle the ball, can shoot the ball. Uh, I don't think Dallas now is going to be interested with adding P.J. Washington. I don't like that trade either. I don't think that's hmm. it's crazy to say. I don't think it's enough with Grant Williams and one pick. Um but yeah, I, I would kind of go to Sacramento that he could be that piece that kind of meshes well with those guys. He's smart. He knows how to play with, with, you know, talented star type players. He's young enough to build with those three cores. I think Fox and Spurs 26, 27 years old. So it's, it's tough. It's, I, I don't understand the loyalty thing to the wizards. He just went there and to build yeah. something there, they're not building anything there. So I, I don't understand that. I probably would have okayed that trade to anywhere else other than stay here. Um, but I love. Kuzma is it possible too. he doesn't? Let me ask you: Is this is this even a thing? Because I know dudes can compartmentalize and all that stuff. Is there a world in which Kyle Kuzma doesn't like someone on the Mavericks or something about that he just doesn't have it in him to go there? Because it really is a weird thing to say no to. It's not like Washington was looking ahead at some positive ending to this season. They they never have been. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. And think about it. Washington is entertaining the idea to trade him. So why yeah. does he care what they're building there when he, they're literally trying to trade him to Dallas for, <laughs> to make this deal work? So it just it doesn't really add up to me. I, maybe there's something there I'm missing, but he's got a big contract. He's making great money. He's a great player in this league. I don't want to see him rot in D.C. I'd rather him go somewhere like a Sacramento. I would have loved to see him in Dallas with Luca and Kyrie. Are you kidding me? Playing in the playoffs, playing on national TV games. You know how much we used to talk about Kyle Kuzma when he was on the Lakers? Now all we're doing is we bring his name up and we talk about how bad they are. Stupid tweets like that. It's it's it sucks for a guy like him that's so talented. You want to see him play on big stages, and he's never going to on this team. He never is. Sacramento or Washington, DC, Lou. You got to pick one. Where are you going? I, Seems like a me dream. personally, I'm going to Washington D.C., but God, I, I knew know. it. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I feel like we've been talking about the. That's not the question. Though. Kings or Wizards is the question, Lou. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's better. 
<laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be the Kings. Honestly, I think we've been talking about the Wizards for like one minute too long. They just it's just okay. a bad team. And what I think is like they should just play better basketball. I don't know why Coos has this uh an infinite love for the Washington Wizards. Maybe he has some maybe he has some some guilt in there that has something to do with how this team was playing. He wants to correct the wrongs. And so, I don't know. Um, final seconds of the game last night. We get a Colin Sexton moment. Uh, it didn't count, by the way. So go ahead and show you the video. But are you guys good with this? This is a pretty <laughs> nasty dunk. No, this was better dunk. than most of the. This is better than most of the dunks we see in the dunk contest. And by the way, they're talking right now, like right now. So it's not like it was close. It's not like this is disrespectful. No. This is just him having fun. And by the way, it was kind of dope. Like he should get in the dunk contest at the rate we're going. I mean, it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, I don't see a problem with this. It was after the it was after the horn. He's having some fun. I don't see anybody should have an issue with this. Also, I'm right sorry, there. not to be a jerk, but it's a 15 game losing streak on that team over there. And uh, why should I have any respect for the game if you guys don't seem to have as much respect for the game? That's the way I'm looking at it. Like I think that everything's on the board. Uh, I ask you this as as guys who played longest losing streak in NBA history. Or finishing with a worst record, which is worse? Worst record. Because the worst okay, record, that's easy. Worst record is is worse because that's the season. Okay. But like Lou, who had the worst record last year? And the like, you, you you don't you don't people don't remember that. But the history books is there for a really long time. So they both suck. <laughs> they both suck. But I think the worst record in the NBA. That's a full season of just ass you know what i mean like that that's that's worse than just like a a historic whatever 25 game losing streak but that's in, that's in the history books at least this people forget about no one's gonna know unless they get the number one pick which like never happens anyways but they both they both are awful all right so the history yeah, is the worst know. okay got it like i, I don't think know. you guys have a better record in the season right I mean, look, it's still on the board that Detroit also finishes with a worse record. So they could have both. Yeah, the, if they the had double. both, like, so yeah. <laughs> it's you like get it's, the double whammy. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, good. it's almost <laughs> a perfect season, guys, if Detroit gets both. <laughs> so we're not done yet. We got plenty of games left for things to move around. Uh, time for some scoops. <laughs> Timberwolves are going to sign veteran forward TJ Warren Shams. Is that happening? TJ Warren will be signing a 10-day contract with the Timberwolves as long as he passes a physical exam today. But this is someone that's a 15 points per game score uh, over his eight-year career. He's had some some foot issues over the course of his career, especially with the Pacers. But he did play for the Nets and Suns last year. He's not a lead. He worked out for the Celtics over the summer. He's now on, on the verge of getting back in. The Timberwolves have looked for a, a wing player, someone that brings some size some insurance uh, in, in their in their wing course. And they looked at uh, Marcus Morris as well, talked to him, but they're going with TJ Warren mm. on a 10-day contract. All right, fair enough. And the Cavs, we, we saw a little bit about Donovan Mitchell yesterday. So he is going to miss, what, the next couple of games, Shams? Yeah, so he, Donovan Mitchell has a bone bruise in his knee. He underwent a PRP injection uh, yesterday, and he's going to be out through the week. He's going to be reevaluated over the weekend. Uh, there doesn't seem to be that much concern about it. Hopefully. Once the weekend subsides after PRP uh, takes its course, uh, Donovan Mitchell will be on the verge of, of making a return. PRP is fun, you guys. I've done that. All right, going to take a quick break right now. We're saying goodbye to Shams. Love you, mean it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. We will see you tomorrow when we come back. We're going to rank stuff on Run It Back. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah. Never too late to do another power rankings. Currently, as they stand, Lou, take it away. Top of the list, number 10, I am going with the Dallas Mavericks. Unfortunately for me, I think they've been um, very just mediocre. Six and four over their last 10 games. For the talent that this team has had, I think they should have been in the top five. But right now, just not getting it done. But I think they cracked the top 10. So I'm starting it off with the Dallas Mavericks. At number nine, I'm sticking with the Western Conference. So I got a, I got a sneaky suspicion that a lot of these teams are going to come out of the West. I like the Kings. Mm. I think we just talked about Sabonis, the impact that he has on games, how he can do so much, so many things with the basketball, with the unbelievable transition point guard and De'Aaron Fox, and they have some pieces around them. 
I still think they're one piece away from really kind of making that next step, getting in that top tier. But this is who they are. They're a solid team. They're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, and they have a really young, dynamic duo that's going to be really, really good for years to come. Okay. I like the Sun. I like the Suns at eight, five and five over their last ten games. Um, very much like I just mentioned with Dallas, injuries and inconsistency is what's plagued this team over the course of the season. I feel like the next time we talk about them, they quite possibly can be a little better, but I just hadn't seen this team turn the corner how we've expected um, with the big with, with the big three and how this team has played. So I got the Suns at eight. We're finally getting to the Eastern Conference here, Lou. Here we, we got go. the Cleveland Cavaliers, and this is a little worrisome with Donovan Mitchell, Bone Bruce, PRP. You don't know how long that's going to last. He's obviously critical to their success. They've had injuries all year long, whether it was him or Mobley or Garland. They've had guys that are in and out of the lineup. Then when they were finally healthy, they made a run and they got hot. They got all the way up to the two seed. Still just don't know if they have enough. Their youth, their inexperience in the playoffs last year, losing to the Knicks in the first round concerns me. Uh, but I think this team is in a good place and they showed that when they're fully healthy, they're they're, 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 they're a real threat in the, in the Eastern Conference. So I got them right now at seven. Got you. So let's stay on the Eastern Conference. I like the Milwaukee Bucks at number six. Eight and ten, eight, eight and two over their last ten. Six and zero oh since the All Star break. We've been critical of Doc Rivers, but he's been he's had some time now to put his system in and get it going and get some defensive players out on the floor. He went out and got Pat Bev, and that's that looked like it's starting to work for them. Pairing him up with Jay Crowder on the defensive end, both of them being three and D guys at this point in their careers. It's working for them. So I got them at, at number six. I possibly got them cracking the uh, top five by the time next time we talk about them again, but six right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the okay. Bucks are gonna continue to go up and up the way they're playing at five, which just might sound weird, than the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> Although they got the best record in the Western Conference, they kind of keep flip-flopping with Oklahoma City. Uh, they're a really solid team. And Ant-Man obviously has become an absolute star. Um, the the, the re-signing of Mike Connelly kind of shows that they are for real. They, it doesn't matter his age. They want to continue to grow this team together. Rudy Gobert's look great. Pro Anthony Towns has looked great. Uh, they're seven and three over their last 10 games. So they're starting to play really, really well. Um, and, and they're continuing to hold that number one spot. No one thought they'd be here. They've exceeded everyone's expectations. Now it's what do they do next? Do they do do they hold on to that one seed? And can they go and knock off one of these teams that's going to be in the play-in? Because it's not going to be easy, no matter if it's the Mavs, if it's the Lakers, the Warriors. They're going to have to go through a really solid team and prove to us to earn our trust to kind of get up there in the top one, two, three. Hmm. Yep, I, I like that. And I also like the Clippers at four. I think this team is sliding a little bit. I think they're allowing their offense to determine how they're going to guard on the other end of the floor. Um, and so they're sliding. Average team after since the All-Star break, five and five. Um, they were sliding a little bit before that. And like we said, this team is one of those teams that has to be whole. Everybody needs to be in the lineup for this team to get over their hump and give them an opportunity to be a championship caliber team. Still got a lot of talent, so I think they stay in the fourth spot. They slid a little bit. I, I think I had them at one or two the last time we did the power rankings, but I got them at four now, but still a good spot for this Clippers team. We're running out of spots. Yeah. There's some good teams. Uh, huh. and the three spot, this one was interesting to me. I, I put them now because we're doing current power rankings now. I got the Denver Nuggets, which they're up two spots from last time I did it. I truly think they're the best team in the Western Conference, but I just can't look away from what the number two team that we're going to get to ha has done all year long. But look, these are the defending champs. They have the best player in the NBA. They have the MVP of the, of the NBA. They're seven and three of the last 10, so they're playing well, they're healthy. Guys like Aaron Gordon and KCP are so pivotal in their roles. They know exactly what to do each and every night. Their bench concerns me a little bit, but it, it could be a different guy every single night. And the health of Jamal Murray is, is great for these guys too. So I think honestly that the team to beat in the West, but right now we gotta put them at the three, slightly behind uh, the next team coming. At number two, I like the Oklahoma City Thunder. I got to show love to these young guns. I think outside of the obvious number one team, they've been the most consistent. And we got to start showing them respect and we got to start giving them the props that they deserve. You know, even though they're young and some of these young guys are still making their name, collectively as a group, they play really well together and they've got a lot of quality wins. And so it's time to start putting some respect on their name. 
they're a real team. They're the real deal. They're going to be some one of those teams that you're really going to have to deal with in the playoffs. So seven and three over that last 10. I like Oklahoma City at number two. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. This is the team of the future, too. Like This is this is the team that's the youngest and, and the brightest future while they're currently winning. Uh, number one here, no surprise, Boston Celtics. They've won 11 straight, hottest team in the NBA, best duo in the NBA. And we've been saying it since training camp. This just seems to be their year, adding guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Tepps Rizingis, that they're healthy, they're playing at an elite level. Derek White is the most solid role player probably in the NBA. So I think the Boston Celtics, 11 straight wins, 10 and 0 over their last 10. Uh, they're running away with it. It's looking like championship or Oman or bus for this team. They're that good. The expectations are that high. So I think this is definitely the team to beat in the East. And I think this is your odds on favorite to win it all this year. All right. So there's a couple I'm like looking here going, all right, sons have lost two Cavs are kind of wonky. Let's figure out who's not here. Let's just start with the obvious. We know Joel Embiid's not playing, but you don't have Sixers in the top 10 at all. So are we just sort of assuming he's not coming back and we've given up Chandler? Well, maybe he does come back and then maybe they get back in there because it's a completely different team with or without Joel and B. This is this is the Nuggets wouldn't be third if Jokic was out for, you know, two months or whatever Joel's going to be out. So I, I think this is just where they are now. I think they still have valuable pieces. I think the Ubres, the Tobias Harris can still go get you 20, 25 points. They have a star in Tyrese Maxey, but... Yeah, this team is so dependent on their everything Joel Embiid that now that he's out, uh, I think there's a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference. I think the Heat are better. I think the Pacers might be better. Like, I think there's a lot of teams that are better than this team without Joel Embiid. And uh, for me, it's a numbers yeah. thing. It's just a okay. numbers thing for me, you know, because, you know, we only have three teams out of the East, right? And so six are sitting at five. Without Joel Embiid and how strong the West is, I just didn't see them cracking the top 10 with how they're playing right now. Okay, okay. So then let's get on this one because you got the Kings in the top 10, but Pelicans have a better record. The Knicks have a better record. Why, why are the Kings getting the love on that one, Lou? I just think for me, it's just reputation, what they've done in the past. Um, you know, and, and again, they're in the Western Conference and, and the Pelicans are just a, a, a victim of just being too quiet, honestly, for me. You know, sometimes hmm. teams can be successful, but they can fly under the radar. They can be a good thing and they can be a bad thing. If I'm the New Orleans Pelicans, I'm looking at this and I feel I feel funny. I feel a little disrespected. And you should use it as motivation, especially with nobody talking about them and them being able to sit at the five spot. They can crash a lot of parties for a lot of really good teams because they're a good team. You know, they got a they got a big three in their own respective rights with with Brandon Ingram, McCollum, and, and Zion Williamson. If this team can find a way to stay consistent, how they've been, you know, this is a team that's 13 games over 500. This is not a bad basketball team, but they're just a victim of being quiet. So I don't know if that's by design or if they want more attention, they want to make some more noise, but it just is what it is for me. Feels to me like people don't watch the Pelicans because the only takes you hear are like the lazy Zion takes, which are, seem dated at this point. But, you know, whatever. That's just my opinion. Uh, so that is the rankings as y'all have them now with about 20 games left in the season. We'll be back. And when we come back, did Paul Pierce poop his pants? Probably. But we'll decide together when Run It Back returns. <laughs> little inner out time right now lou you're up first former grizzly scorekeeper has admitted stat boosting uh nba games during the 90s not even sure how this topic comes up now but lou uh you in and out as far as this being a major issue for the league well i'm 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 in that this has been happening it not just the 90s but the 2000s 2010s you know this Bro. is sports entertainment business you've seen a couple guys make a pass and you might head fake pump fake two dribbles still get an assist you know this is depending to know who that player is if, if they're they have a reputation of being a high assist guy or a high rebound guy you know some of those little little stats get a little tricky sometimes when when you can disguise it so i don't see this as an issue for the league i don't think fans really care about this type of thing so um i'm i'm, I'm in I, I totally i appreciate him admitting to this i like to see the rest of them admit to it as well Matter of fact, I'm starting to think these Memphis scorekeepers were taking my stats away when I was there, Lou. I think they were doing a little reverse hate instead of boosting, instead of boosting me. I they were know. hurting the home team. They did it the opposite way. <laughs> they were taking your stats and giving them to somebody else. That's right. That's right. This fits. 
Right. This checks out, Chandler. I actually, I'm buying your theory, and I, uh, I like it. Uh, next up, Paul Pierce. Oh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> this, this will never die. Uh, if I did poop my pants, why would I sit in a wheelchair? All you little new generation social media gurus who Photoshop the stain in my pants on Twitter, I know a lot of y'all just mad that I busted the Lakers' ass that year. I mean, I have personally had this conversation with Paul repeatedly. He swears that that ain't poop in his pants. Y'all. Set the record didn't he, straight. Didn't he, but didn't he say publicly though he had to go take a shit? Didn't he? Had- it has. But he has. It's very Paul. He has sort of said everything. He's once he's even said, "Yeah, I pooped my pants." It's like he's. This will never die, which I don't want it to, Chandler. But it, it, in your heart of hearts, is that crap in his pants? I, I think it is. I, it is tough, and and the world of of AI and and all this these fake photos. I. I I think he did this. I think it was too dramatic. Again, he said before that he, he had to go to the bathroom. He has once you say it once, you can't backtrack. It's, it's, it's over. I, I can't. I can't unhear it. Uh, so yeah, it happens to all of us. It's happened to me this calendar year in my own, my own home. It happens. Once is, one could say almost this month. It happened to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's probably not going to be the last time. So I no, I'm not buying it. I think he should have felt, and I think he's backtracking. It's funny that three other adults are talking about another guy pooping his pants. I will never, ever not talk about this topic. He's even gone into detail about what would happen to poop if it was in your underwear and you sat down. Like there's there's like a whole science project behind all this. Lou, you think yay or nay? Just yeah, I just need to know for my own health. Poop or not? I, I poop, yes. Yes. Just wanted Lou to say poop. All right, moving on. <laughs> The Sixers announced that Allen Iverson will be getting a statue um, on Legends Walk at the training facility out there. He'll be joining Barkley, Wilt, Dr. J, Mo Cheeks, and Moses Malone, just to name a few, in or out on it taking this long, Lou. Yeah, what the hell took so long? <laughs> well, I'm, well, no, I'm, I'm out because I think the Prex facility is relatively new. Uh, I think well, the practice is uh, well, I, they got to start somewhere, right? So I know, but some of those Barclays. names I mentioned are before AI. With, I mean, I think it's a pecking order. You start with the Barclays, you start with the Wilts, the Dr. J's, and the Mo Cheeks, the Moses Malones. AI's only guy on this list that's considered a, a new school guy, so to speak. So you have to start with the guys who paved the way for him. And then you put him there. The, the practice facility has only been there two or three years. I think this is right on time. Okay. Okay. Chandler and I disagree. I'm just speaking for you. Yeah, we'll take a quick break. <laughs> See, it took way too long. Should have been like the first or second. Uh, quick break. We come back. We'll wrap things up on a Tuesday. Running back, yeah. Run it all. The running back, yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, look at that. Cavs, Celtics tonight. You got the Kelsey brothers bobbleheads. I mean, they are everywhere, Chandler. Did you see the press conference yesterday? A lot of crying going on as the retirement's official for Jason. Thoughts, thoughts on all that? Yeah, that that was that was sad. That was crazy. Jason oh. like, seems like the greatest guy ever. Uh, Travis, sad. I actually I golf with sad? him last. I golf with Trav last week. I set him up with JB Bickerstaff. He's gonna fire up those guys tonight and talk to them pre-game. So I got the cap. You know, who the Cavs play tonight? I got them to the goddamn The Celtics. Movement. The Celtics. Ooh, never mind. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Perfect. Run it all. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it.